This is a Mercedes-AMG F1 W13E performance, and it's nothing like the best car in the world. No might get into trouble for saying that, but oh well. I'll explain exactly what I mean a bit later on in this video because I'm going to review this new racing car. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Formula One. Wow. Right, I think I better start off this video explaining exactly why this car is nothing like the best car in the world before Toto Wolf throws his headphones at me. You see, the best car in the world is last season's W12, you know, won the Constructors Championship, didn't it? This car is completely different. In fact, only two bits are really carried over from that car. It's just the steering wheel and something on the pedals. This is 98% new. It could eventually turn out to be the best car in the world, but we won't find out until the end of the season now, will we? The reason this car is so different than the previous seasons is because for 2022, the rule book is pretty much completely changed. In fact, it's twice as long. One of the changes center around the wheels. In the past, they were 13 inches. Now, 18 inches. That means you've got lower profile tires, which don't overheat so much, and they have less sidewalls, so they're a bit more precise. Bigger rims are good. However, Mercedes has decided to fit plastic wheel trims to the car. I wonder if that's got something to do with the fact that the budget for the year is slightly less, but more on that later. One of the rules that hasn't changed is the configuration of the engine. So it's still a 1.6 litre V6 turbo hybrid. Now it drives the rear wheels via an eight speed sequential single clutch gearbox. Power output is a thousand horsepower, which means this car should be able to do 0 to 60 in around 2.5 seconds, which is slightly slower than I've done in a Tesla Model S Plaid. So there you go, Lewis. I'm faster than you, well, quicker. Now let's talk about aerodynamics, obviously a key feature of a Formula One car. This front wing is all new. In the previous season, you were allowed five planes on the front wing. Now, you're only allowed four of them. However, what the rule book taketh away, it also giveth. Now, you can have winglets on the wheels, which weren't allowed before. Another major change to the aerodynamics is the rear wing. So on the previous season's car, it was square. That provided loads of downforce. Problem with that is that it actually kicked up loads of turbulent air behind it, which meant that if you're in the car behind, you couldn't make use of your car's aero. You lost a load of downforce, which made it very hard to overtake. So these new wings are designed to actually channel the air so it's less turbulent. So the car behind now can actually deploy and use its downforce. So there's going to be more overtake Obviously, they've had to redesign the DRS system. And I wonder what the gap's like here. Let me just have a check. Oops, I might just end up with a 50,000 euro fine for doing that. And unlike Max, I'm a motoring journalist, so I can't afford to pay that. So the rules have gone and removed quite a bit of downforce from the outside of the car. But what they've allowed is something that's been banned since the early 1980s and that's for the manufacturers to use ground effect. And so now this car has this huge tunnel underneath it. So you can see these Venturi tunnels here. The air goes in there and it's accelerated underneath the car and exits at the back. And the air going through there is moving quicker than the air over the top of the car. And that basically creates lower pressure down here. The pressure of the air on the top pushes it down. And effectively what you've got is like an upside down airplane wing. It's crazy. Now, Look at this bit here. It looks like the carbon fiber has melted somewhat in the oven, but this has been specifically designed like that. Now, Mercedes AMG's engineers will not tell me exactly what that does and why, but it definitely does something. Another change for this year is the fuel. So last season, the fuel had about 6% ethanol content. This year, it has 10%. So it's effectively E10 fuel, just like you get on your petrol forecourt. Although obviously it is slightly higher quality fuel with some extra bits added to it because yeah, Formula One engine demands that kind of treatment. Now you might be wondering what this E is for. It's an emergency sticker because you see that tab there? You pull that tab if there's a fire in the car and it'll actually set off a fire extinguisher throughout it and fill it full of foam and stuff like that. And the devil in me sort of just wants to pull it. Although if I do that, um, this car won't be able to race the first race in Bahrain. So um, stop it, Matt, stop it. Now, Formula One fans have been complaining that the cars have been getting a little bit too big in recent years, and that makes it harder for them to overtake each other on tight street circuits such as Monaco. That's why this new version is actually slightly smaller 
than the previous model. However, it is still quite big. You see, this W13 still measures over five meters long. However, despite being ever so slightly shorter than the W12, it does have improved crash protection. So it's 15% better at absorbing energy in a crash from the rear and 48% better at the front, which is handy if your rival suddenly decides to brake check you. Anyway, as with road cars, increasing safety also increases the weight. And so this car is actually 43 kilograms heavier than the W12. That weighed in at 752 kilos, whereas this one is 795 kilos. Though that's still half the weight of an AMG A45S. Finally, let's talk about cold hard cash. So the budget for this year's Formula One season is capped at $140 million, which is actually $5 million less than they had last year. And for that, they have to do everything. They have to design the car, build it, and test it. There are some things excluded from that number though, and that's marketing costs, travel costs, and the salaries of the three highest paid people on the team, which is a good job because if they had to pay Lewis out of that budget, they really wouldn't have much left for a car at all. And they need to be able to build between four and six in a year. Reason being that, you know, some may be crashed. And also the car that you see here, which will be used in the first race, will actually be very different than the car that actually finishes the season in the 23rd race. And anyway, $140 million is actually pretty good value when you consider what you're getting because the next Mercedes A-Class will actually cost over $1 billion to develop.